everyone, I'm Zane Lewis, and today I will be interviewing Tom here, who is the head of a railroad restoration project at the town of Como, Colorado. Him and his fellow volunteers are trying to restore part of the Denver, South Park, and Pacific Railroad, and they run a nonprofit organization to do so. Links to their website, fundraisers, and more will be in the description of this video. I really encourage you to check out their website, and if you're interested, support the fundraisers in the description. They do not bring in many donations, so any amount of money, even just $5, is of help. Despite not bringing in many donations, they have actually restored quite a bit, such as a roundhouse, a steam locomotive, numerous freight cars, and relayed a bunch of track. I myself helped them relay track in August of 2020. Anyways, without further ado, let the interview begin. Um, so when, when did you and your team first decide to start restoring the railroad stuff at Como? Well, uh, the depot has been sitting idle for many years, and about 10 years ago, uh, there was effort to save the depot, fix mm -hmm. the roof, and um, if you go on the website, you'll see the photos of, there's two websites to look at, Denver South Park and Pacific Railway Historical Society, and the South Park Rail Society. Both those websites they have photos of the depot and the condition that it was. And that's how it all started was to just to uh, save the depot. Mm -hmm. And then from then on, it started to move the build up, put a set of track out in front of it just to show it was a depot. Right. The roundhouse was sitting there idle. It had been a barn. It had been a sawmill. <laughs> it had been a body shop. And wow. a gentleman bought it and he started to fix it up a little bit. And then the couple that own it now, Chuck and uh, Dr. Chuck and Kathy Brannigan in Denver bought it to mm -hmm. preserve it. Mm -hmm. And that was about 10 years ago. And then slowly but surely the roundhouse was saved, a new roof, new windows. Two years ago, we put in a turntable. We've been adding track ever since. Awesome. Awesome. That's really cool. Um, um... So uh, what what made you guys want to restore the stuff at Como specifically? Um, do you guys have a long history of liking trains and stuff, I take it? Well, we all we all have railroad in our blood <laughs> one way or the other way. And, uh -huh. um, it kind of, everybody came from different directions. And they, the goal was, this is a unique, that this junction, this little town was left undisturbed with this railroad depot with the roundhouse, it's a beautiful stone roundhouse. Um, it, um, it represents an air that's long gone. Mm -hmm. There's only four roundhouses that stand in the whole state of Colorado, and this is probably the most beautiful one. It's <laughs> stone with arched doors and arched windows. Yep. So it was very unique. And the idea is to renovate this. This is a, will be an interactive museum of narrow gauge railway in the mountains particularly Ooh. Denver South Park and Pacific which later became the Colorado Southern wow that's pretty cool uh if you had to estimate how many volunteers do you think you've had ever since you began restoring Como I would say there's up to 100 volunteers who have not only volunteered to work on the, on the buildings but on the, the uh, equipment the locomotive Mm -hmm. building the track, going out and salvaging materials mm -hmm. um, like we'll do next weekend here in Longmont. Awesome. Awesome. Um, what is the average number of volunteers you get per work session? Usually 20 to 25. Awesome. Um, are you guys able to get a lot of stuff done? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, everybody we get, we plan these out pretty good. Mm -hmm. We don't plan the morning of. We have it well planned before volunteers show up. Right. When we send out volunteer notices, our contact list. We explain what we're going to be doing. Most of the volunteers, when they get there, they know exactly what they got to do, and they go grab tools, and they start working right away. Okay. So we, get, we get a lot of production out of volunteers, probably more production than if we paid people. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, so... How much stuff are you guys trying to restore? Well, we've got 11 cars up there right now. We, we you know, we're going to, we just acquired all these cars in the last two years. So we got mm -hmm. years of work to, to <laughs> um, um, renovate the cars, 
We're, we got more track planned for next summer. We're going to extend our board or our gunner, gunners in Maine south. We're going to hit some more track around the uh, turntable. Mm-hmm. And we're going to do some more work in the roundhouse next year. Awesome. Um, uh, are there any uh, train cars you're trying to restore at the moment? Yeah, there's a, uh, a gondola that we're leasing from um, uh, Central City. Mm-hmm. And that's in the roundhouse right now. and We're in the midst of rehabbing that, that car right now. When that car is completed, we have a box car to paint that's inside the roundhouse right now. Right. We have another box car outside that's going to be painted. And then we have another gondola that will come inside to be worked on. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, um, I remember uh, like a few months ago, you guys were uh, busy raising um, uh, money to restore this one uh, Denver and Rio Grande box car. Uh, You guys still working on that? Yeah, that one, the one that you saw, it's in pretty good condition, and we uh, we raised the money just to get it there, and we mm-hmm. did raise the money to bring it there. It came from Kansas. Okay. Private owner donated it to us. Uh huh. Yeah, I, I, I rem- um, yeah, I put uh, I put the link to uh, your guys's fundraisers in uh, my uh, video descriptions. Uh, by the way, uh, I always put a little thing at the uh, end of my uh, railroad videos um, about. Uh, about uh, what you guys do and to, to try and get people to donate and stuff. Yeah. Yep. Um, so uh, how much how much progress would you guys uh, or would you say you guys have made? Um, and have we've you made f- a lot of we've made a lot of progress. Awesome. Particularly the last two years, we have two volunteers that show up with uh, with equipment of a back um, a bobcat and a John Deere with a construction tractor with a backhoe. <laughs> They live right nearby, and uh, they bring their equipment there. We help them with the fuel, mm-hmm. and they've been great volunteers. That's and awesome. For them, we still be doing a lot by hand. Uh huh. Um, have you finished the majority of what you want to do? Yeah, we we're 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 on schedule. We were a little behind this year because of COVID. COVID yeah. Because we have a few volunteers that do not want to come up during the COVID. Yeah, but we expect next year this will be settled down. We'll be at full blast. Right, right. Um, um. So, um. How how many trains are you in possession of? How many what? Uh, trains. Like cars? railroad cars and uh, yeah, 11, trains in general. Cars. Eleven. Okay. Um. And then you guys own a steam engine, right? The Klondike. There's a steam engine up there. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's they're working on that right now. They're working on the drivers, and they gotta get to uh, prepare a compressor in there. Right. And, uh, that should be coming along. You know, hopefully that'll be done by next spring. Wait. So, uh, is the engine operational or? Uh, yeah, uh, it's operational. Okay. We did not operate it this past year because we really didn't want to encourage any crowds up there under the yeah. pandemic conditions. Yeah. So we decided to start. Working on the locomotive was a good time to do it, and um, so hopefully the work will be done by next spring. And then next year, Saturday, August fifteenth, will be be built <laughs> Pass Railroad Day. Uh huh. And Saturday the fifteenth. Okay. Uh, All right. Uh, We're planning that right now. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, do you guys have any plans to uh, acquire any more trains and stuff? Not at the moment. We got our hands full. Unless, <laughs> something, unless something comes up uh-huh. w- once in a lifetime, because when these things come up, you got to grab them. You can't, yeah. you can't pass up historical things. Yep. Yep. Could disappear, could be scrapped or thrown right. away or whatever. So you got to grab it when the grabbing is good. Right. So you guys, own, uh, I if I'm remembering correctly, I think you guys own a di- uh, like the remains of a diesel, right? You have what? Uh, a diesel, a diesel engine. Um, well, we have we have a little diesel engine, and it needs an engine. We have the engine there. We just got to get to that too this winter. Hopefully, we can get that diesel, that new motor put in, and we we'll have a little diesel engine just to move the cars around. Okay, okay. That's... Move the cars around. Um, cause like when I last saw it, I think it was just uh, I think you guys just had like the uh, trucks or something on it, and uh. Uh, so yeah, we had the, I think when you were there, the engine was out. Okay. Um, so are you guys rebuilding the cab on that? Well, he's got to get the engine in first. Okay. He's got to get a shoehorn in 
and get that engine into the engine a little bigger than than the, than the locomotive. So they got to do some custom work. Right. To make it work. Right. Um, what's your guys' work season? Work season starts in, well, actually, work season is all year long. Okay. Work at Como is from May to September, early October, depending on weather. But during the off months, we're busy trying to acquire uh, uh, materials. Okay. Like next weekend, we'll re- 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 uh, we plan to retrieve about 500 ties. Okay. We call up to Como, and then we sell them down. Uh-huh. That's pretty cool. Um, uh, so is there anything specific that you guys are trying to restore at the moment? No, just keeping up with, you know, just moving ahead, you know, rebuilding the track, Mm -hmm. spending the track, working on the 4319 gondola that's sitting in the, in the roundhouse right now. It's the original Colorado and Southern uh, car was built during World War One, and it was built in the, actually built in the shops of the Colorado Southern Railway in, in Denver itself. Wow, that's really cool. Um, you guys have, you guys, uh, you guys acquired a uh, box car from um, uh, uh, the Boreas Pass, right? Right. Okay. And that box car had been saved by the Forest Service. The Forest Service has decided probably be better to have it down where all the other cars are. Mm-hmm. So that was brought down about two months ago. Oh wow! We got it. We got a position right in front of the uh, the uh, uh, the depot where people can see it. Mm-hmm. And there'll be a staircase, and then the summer will be open up. You can go in and see what the inside of the car looks like. We oh. just got to get it painted. Uh, hopefully next summer. Okay, that's really cool. Uh, is that the box car? Is that uh, the Colorado and Southern box car that you guys have a fundraiser yeah. link to on your yeah, website? It's a, it's a different type. Okay. And then we acquired another box car. It was sitting in a cornfield or a, a pasture somewhere down in uh, Orthe, um, Colorado, and that was just acquired about a month ago. Okay. Does not have wheels, so we we had a set of wheels. It's sitting on wheels right now at at the um, at the roundhouse. Awesome. Um, let's see. Um, so where do you guys get your supplies from, uh, like railroad track and stuff like that? Well, track we've acquired when the uh, city of Breckenridge at one point was going to uh, build a railroad. And they never did. They acquired uh, a lot of rail about 20 years ago in an auction. Mm-hmm. We've gotten all that rail now up to uh, Como. We're planning on acquiring some railroad up here in Longmont in the future. It's left over from an industrial branch. Mm-hmm. Ties, switch ties, bridge timbers, we've recovered with the help of the Burlington over Burlington Northern over the last four years. Mm-hmm. Um, do you get Do you get any of your uh, railroad track from uh, uh, from uh, uh, any major railroad like Union Pacific or BNSF? No. Oh, okay. We, we have not had luck with Union Pacific. Burlington Northern has been very helpful. Yep. Yep. Um, so they do they just give it to you for free or? Uh... Well, we got to go recover it. We have to go on their property. We have to sign forms, donation documents, insurance, uh-huh. and the volunteers all got to be safety certified. You got to be very careful. Right. You have to have Burlington employees on the property at the time. Mm-hmm. The trucks, everything. We hire a contractor that's certified by the railroad, and uh, we plan this very concise, like I am next Saturday. Uh, we go in. We stay away from the track. We. Um, De spike all the ties. It takes a lot of work. <laughs> we bundle the ties up into bundles. We strap them. Wow. And uh, then we load them on the trucks and we bring them up to Como. Okay. I'm hoping to, re- I'm hoping to recover 500 more ties. If we, we, part, if we uh, recover those 500 ties, we brought up to Como 2,500 ties in the last four years. Wow. That's a lot. Um, so, how far are you guys building out the uh, railroad track for? Well, the extension of the property that we either own or lease, and um, we have right now in a, in a straight line, we have about a half mile of track plus another quarter mile of of the uh, radius track around the turntable. Uh, we're probably going to add uh, another quarter of a mile next summer, and I, I don't know what our plans are after that. Okay. Um yeah, because when I when I uh, volunteered for you guys, um, uh, 
I remember like you guys said something about like uh, how you like um, uh, how you guys wanted to extend a bit farther, but uh, like you would run into this uh, guy's property and he and that guy like really doesn't like you or something. Well, that somebody told you that. I I don't know that. No, we we yeah. have good relationship with everybody up there. Oh, okay. It's a question if somebody wants a railroad in their backyard. So <laughs> we haven't gotten to that point yet. But yeah, we have good relationships with everybody in the town of Como. Matter of fact. The Como residents uh, come over and help a lot. They come over on work days and they bring food and they stand there and they cheer us on. And uh, they're very, our neighbor right across the street, Andrew Zimmerman, uh -huh. he and his son have come over many times. Andrew helped me put up a new fence. I mean, they're, they're really, they're really energetic about the railroad there. That's awesome. So we have a good relationship with them because some towns would have a museum of some sort and all of a sudden, the residents don't like the museum there, so right because it brings, it brings a lot of people, and they don't like people. So <laughs> yeah, we're very, we're very we appreciate our presence, and we uh, have a good relationship with all the residents in that town. Yep. Um. Uh. So, do you have any sort of idea as to uh, when you might finish your most important goals? Uh, I don't think we have really any. At this moment, we don't have any. I mean, this thing is all, it's its come together over the years. And each year, it's, you know, we we find ourselves doing a lot more than we planned. Right. So we're at a point right now, it's hard to plan. <laughs> we got a lot of energy. We got a lot of volunteers. And uh, we, we don't want to overextend ourselves. We don't have big dreams. Uh -huh. There's a few people that have big dreams, but you got to be realistic about dreams. Yep. One of the projects we're going to start this winter is we're going to start building a, a water tower on Ooh. the original uh, footings that were behind the uh, the roundhouse. Awesome. We're working on that right now. We've gotten some grants. We've got uh, uh, one of the gentlemen's going to go uh, cut timbers for us. We've got to get the wood, some trees. Mm -hmm. and uh, we got two contractors up there that are going to help us over the winter to build this. And we hopefully will have the platform for the uh, water tower built by next spring. Awesome. And then we'll go then on to build the tank. Uh-huh. Um, uh, so um, it, will this uh, water tank be operational or like? Yes. Uh, okay. We plan, on, we plan on putting a plastic um, uh, container inside the water tank itself to protect the wood and everything and be enough then to actually load water into the into the steam locomotive. Okay, that's really cool. That's very cool. Um, uh, so, if you guys uh, finish res uh, finish restoring what you want to at Como, um, are there any uh, other restoration projects you would like to undertake? We, we're focused on Como only. <laughs> we're not going <laughs> nice. anywhere beyond that. Yep. Yep. So basically, do you guys we like got our hands full? We got our hands full right now, and <laughs> just take. We bite off a little bit at a time, what we feel we can do. We're not trying to overstretch ourselves. Yeah, that's a good thing. Um, so uh, if you, um, so basically, do you guys uh, like say, like I remember earlier you said uh, that you guys originally only wanted to restore the depot. So do you guys, uh, do you guys come up with more to do over time and stuff? Yeah, as, as more and more people got involved and grants became uh, available, we, we uh, some of the guys applied for the grants. We got funding. We and, and uh, the, the, the depot itself was all funded from grants to all okay. the work we did on that, and that's in great shape as you saw last summer. Right, right. Now I can show you a photo. Do you want to see a photo? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Okay, here. You tell me how it's coming out here. Okay. Uh, can't really see it yet. Uh, I think you need to move it back. There. Okay, there we go. That's How's pretty that? cool. Yeah. Wow. How long ago was that? That's over a year ago. Okay. Wow. You guys have gotten a lot done, it seems like. And, hmm, it seems like you, yeah, I don't see the uh, track that you built beyond the hotel. Nice. Yeah. So this is before, I, I think it was the end of last year, if I remember. Wow. That's really cool. Um. Uh, so, uh, how long did it take you to finish restoring the, uh, roundhouse? 
Well, the roundhouse isn't really finished. Uh, that roundhouse with the doors and the roof and the windows probably took 10 years to do it. We've been uh -huh. doing work inside the roundhouse, and that's going to be one of our focuses next year to do more work inside the roundhouse. Uh -huh. so, uh, we cleaned out a uh, lot, not this summer, but the summer of 19, we cleaned out a lot of stuff out of that roundhouse. It would have been a catch all for a print shop and a catch all for an old um, water drilling wagon. And we were able to find homes for that equipment and move it out, provided us more room in the roundhouse. We've, uh, our, our plans are eventually to have a wood floor through the whole roundhouse. Oh, okay. Um, right now we have a portion of a wood floor in the shop and uh, we've got gravel in, in, in three of the, um, of the tracks inside the um, roundhouse, and we have a pit that we we um, worked on two years ago, and the locomotive is sitting in that pit right now where they can work on it. Awesome. Um, um, anyways, uh, so um, how can people help you guys restore the uh, uh, Denver South Park and Pacific Railroad at Como? Well, you can go on our website, put your name in there, <laughs> send us a check. <laughs> that's how you can help um and then uh and then you guys have any uh specific fundraisers they can donate to well the the only really fundraiser we have is boreas past day which is august 15th mm -hmm. so um and i said that was august 15th next summer right right yeah here's the um okay nice it just got printed about a week ago. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um. So don't don't you guys still have the uh, fundraisers for those two box cars though? Like the. Uh... Well, yeah. You can if you go to either go to the the South Park Rail Society site. Mm-hmm. Okay. And in there, there's uh, there's a chance there to it's like a go me go fund me type thing. Right. If you go in there, you'll see donation, and you press the button, and you enter in there, and you can enter information. Right. We can send checks. Yep. Yeah. Checks I, I, actually, I actually come to my house here. Huh. Yeah, I remember I, I donated to that uh, D and RGW uh, boxcar fund you guys have. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, anyways, um, uh, if I might ask you, uh, what is your favorite railroad, and uh, what's your favorite train? Uh, well, I'm from, I'm from Chicago. Okay. And, uh, I actually, my original interest in railroading was electric railroads. Ooh. And, uh, my favorite railroad was the Chicago North Shore and Milwaukee Railway. Huh. Railroad that ran between downtown Chicago and, um, um, Milwaukee. And, uh, their train on that, uh, the, there were two trains built by St. Louis um, Car Company right after, um, right before World War II, and they were called Electroliners. Right. One is preserved at the Illinois Railroad Museum, and one is um, uh, preserved in a museum in uh, Pennsylvania. Okay. Not preserved as Electroliners, preserved as a Liberty Liner, because when the North Shore went out of business, uh, Rapid Transit Company out of Philadelphia, the Norristown line, bought both the car, both the trains are articulated. Uh -huh. I can show you a picture. Um, hang on a second. Here. Yeah, of course. You go ahead and ask me another question. Um. Anyways, uh, so um, uh, uh, what made you um, what made you interested in the uh, Denver South Park and Pacific Railroad? I saw some guys one day uh, recovering some track in Boulder, and I got talking to them, and one thing led to another, and uh, <laughs> um, I was involved. Um, and uh, so I, I, I got originally involved just helping as a track person, but then they couldn't find any ties. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, let me, let me help you see if I can find some ties for you. Well, one thing led to another, <laughs> and I... And I found the tie, I, and I was able to locate ties 
in Broomfield, uh, Colorado, which is just below me. And that was four years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was able to recover 500 times. Wow. So I got one thing after another. Here's right. a here's a photo of the electric liner right here. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Um, wow. So are there? There's only two left. Uh, the two. Yeah, there's remaining. only two, there was only two ever built. Okay. Were articulated, and when they came to Chicago, they ran on the Chicago L system, so they had to have the short cars. <laughs> they had to be narrow, so they fit with the regular rapid transit cars. How fast were they? Hmm? How fast were they? Uh, they would clock uh, speeds on the Skokie Valley route up to 90 miles an hour. Wow. Wow. They ran, cool. um, they ran every day for 20 years. They made uh, each each car, each uh, set made six trips a day. Awesome. They That's really cool. And then when they weren't in service, usually in the weekends, they would put some other cars in. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Um, are you into any modern trains? Not really. Yeah. No. <laughs> yep. They all, uh, look, they all look alike today. <laughs> what made you interested in trains originally? I was a little younger than you. I was in Utica, <laughs> New York, and I went down to the, we used to take the bus down to the YMCA to take swim lessons, and the station was right there. Mm -hmm. And I was watching all these big locomotives in the New York Central Station, and that was the, the, the beginning. Then I had a, a Lionel train set, and one thing led to another. Wow, that's really cool. Um, anyways, um, yeah, I'd, I, uh, it's been a great in interview. I'd really like, I'm really thankful that you were able to uh, find the time to be able to do this. Yeah. Um, Sorry, it's taking me so long. <laughs> Yeah, don't worry. It's been fine. Um, uh, so anyways, um, uh, I really hope that some people are able to, uh, uh, that people who watch this will uh, c go to your website and check it out and uh, maybe uh, consider donating and uh, uh, maybe yeah. even you'll get, maybe you'll even get a new volunteer or something. Um, yeah. Um, because uh, this is the because what you guys are doing is amazing and uh, you guys are doing it without very much money, without uh, very much assistance really, but um. And uh, you guys, uh, it's uh, it's preserving the past, and uh, the past is something that deserves to remember, uh, be remembered, even uh, no matter how big or small. Uh, um, and uh, uh, your guys' project will uh, ensure that uh, the uh, Como Railroad can be remembered for years into the future. Yeah, and it's an opportunity for you, people your age, and people that are just now coming up to mm -hmm. appreciate what what really happened what brought commerce and what built many communities and how these communities Como was only brought there because of the railroad it was a junction yeah that's for sure it had three thousand people in it i understand yeah yeah it's like um like a lot of towns were just but were built just because of the railroads and stuff like that um along with the mines and uh you know that actually brings me to something uh when I'm older, I would like to. Uh, I'd like to be able to go out to Colorado and uh, help fix up some of the abandoned mines that litter your state and stuff like that. Because um, there's a lot, and uh, nobody's really doing much about them. So somebody's got to do something about them. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. Yes, you're you're pass welcome. On, pass on the message. Yep, I will. Thank you for uh, thank you for giving me your time, yeah. sir. <laughs> thank you. All right. Yep. Bye. Bye.